Eric here with heatcable.com and today I want to tell you about the difference between a GFCI and a GFEP. Most of you are often familiar with a GFCI outlet. You see them in your kitchens, your bathrooms, places around the house. They got these cute little test reset buttons on the outlet so you can reset it when it trips. Well, let me tell you why a GFCI is used. So this is a circuit interrupter, hence GFCI. If you were to have a light bulb, this light bulb is gonna have a filament set coming up in it. Okay, our light bulb has this filament right here. And one of those lines is feeding power in and the other one is sending power back to a breaker like this. And as the filament at the top is connected, it allows that to then shine and send light out. Perfect. We all understand how a light bulb works, but what happens if somebody were to take a paper clip and touch the filament? They're gonna get a little bit of a shock. Well, what that shock is, it's energy from this circuit leaving the circuit. It's exiting and leaving the circuit. And that exiting of power is a reduction in how much power is coming back to the breaker. And the breaker can sense this. That's the sensitivity of the circuit interrupter. Let me explain a little bit more. So you guys have all probably heard of a Richter scale and understand how it works. It measures earthquakes and say the, bound, the variance in, in vibration. Well, electricity might do something similar to that. Let's say the electrical flow in a, current, a circuit is running similar to that, okay? And we have a boundary right here of five milliamps of power variation. And everything's flowing well up until that child puts a paper clip in the outlet. When it does that, all of a sudden things start jumping around and it leaves this boundary point because the electricity in the circuit is exiting the circuit and it can sense that. At that point, a circuit interrupter like this is going to trip and shut the circuit off, protecting the child or the person that's pulling power outside that circuit. Now, why is that important to heat cable? Let me explain. Self-regulating heat cable acts similar to a capacitor or a battery. Now, a battery, it consumes energy, has energy, it retains it. Well, heat cable does the same thing. And so if you've got power going into the system and the heat cable is consuming that power, energizing, it's not sending the same signal back to your breaker. So at that point, it's actually gonna send these things way outside of this boundary of five milliamps. Therefore, you need a larger boundary that's gonna be way outside here to indicate when it needs to trip. So that is why a GFEP comes into play. A GFEP has a sensitivity level of 30 milliamps over what is normally as a circuit interrupter, a five milliamp. Now, oftentimes they can look similar. These are two breakers, very similar in size, shape, buttons, except one button is orange and the other one is white. The orange one, if you look on the side of the breaker, it actually says 30 milliamp sensitivity and the white button says five milliamp sensitivity. So the heat cable, self-regulating heat cable systems need to have a 30 milliamp trip load on their system. Now, how can you apply this to your system? You can actually do it in a number of ways. So one is you can change the breaker itself. You can add what is called a GFEP pigtail or plug to the line. You can also add what we call is a DIN rail mini breaker that we can add these into something like a control box like this. So this is a thermostatically controlled control box that will kick the system on when temperatures are set. And we can add that GFEP in the box. So there are a number of ways you can add those in there but it is absolutely critical that your heat cable system has a circuit interrupter that is rated for the system. So a GFEP is absolutely vital. A GFCI will give you nuisance trips because the energizing of the cable will send the power outside those boundary limits for a standard GFCI. So 
I hope this information has been helpful and gives you a little bit of direction on what to get for your system and how to set it up. If you have additional questions, need information, feel free to contact us or look us up on heatcable.com. We'd love to help you out with all of your projects, all of your uh, supplies and needs that you have for your heat cable system. Thanks, Eric Wimmer here with heatcable.com.